On my last TK Friday video, I did a tutorial on exposure blending. This is a follow-up tutorial. I'm going to show you how to exposure blend in Photoshop using Blend Diff. This is a very simple and can be a very effective way of exposure blending. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On my last TK Friday episode, I showed you how to exposure blend using linear profiles and the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Today I'm going to show you a different way, a different approach to exposure blending. It doesn't always work for all images, but when it does work, it is really quick and it is really easy. And I want to show that to you today. I'll be using the same lighthouse image from Michelle Verilac, and I hope I'm saying that right, Michelle, sorry if I'm not, just so you could see a comparison between the two. Now, the way I did it on Friday, I think, is probably the best way to do it, but on a simple image like this particular one, I think this way works very effectively, as I said. I'll be working with two exposures, just like I did on Friday. This is the dark exposure on the top left. On the right is the exposure for the foreground, and on the bottom left is the blend that I did on the last TK Friday, and this is the kind of result we'll get using the blend if the image on the right of the TK Friday image. As you can see, they're both pretty good. Now, there's a little bit of movement in the sky, but it doesn't affect it too much. Now, on the image on the left, I have the original sky, so that's kind of nice, and that's why I think it's a little better. But for this image, that little bit of movement is really not hurting anything. In fact, it makes the sky look a little bit softer due to the movement. Oh, and by the way, I came up with a little quicker way of doing the initial exposure matching. It's just going to be just a little bit faster. And what I'm going to do is just sync both of these images together. So I have the dark image selected. I'm going to command or control click on the light image. Let me get out of this uh, survey mode. And I'll click right here. So both images are now selected. And now we'll go up and click on the develop module. And make sure you have sync ticked on right here. So now we're in auto sync. And what I'll do first is apply the linear profile and that'll apply it to both images. And let's come down to lens corrections and remove chromatic aberrations and I'll enable profile corrections. And now let's come back up to the basic panel and click auto. So that does all that for us just like that with the auto sync. Now I'm going to shut the auto sync off. And at this point, just like the TK Friday video, I'm going to select the dark image and we're going to be adjusting it. But first, I'm going to put the I'm going to go into this reference mode and drag the light image up into here so we can compare the image on the left to the right. Basically, what I'm trying to do is match the image on the left to the image on the right. So I'll be adjusting the darker image to match the image on the left. If you've already seen me do this on my TK Friday video, you could skip ahead to where I'm into Photoshop and I'll be doing the blend if there. So I'm looking at the image on the left and looking at the image on the right, and I'm going to take the exposure on the dark image and pull it up to get it as close as I can to the image on the left. It's really important to get this exposure matched. It'll make your life so much easier. And then uh, I've blown out the sky here a little bit, and I need that. So I'm going to pull my highlights back. I need to recover that and also my whites. I need to pull my whites back to recover that. And now I may open up the shadows a little bit more and maybe pull the exposure up a little bit. I just want to get them close and maybe a little bit more vibrance. Not too much. And I think saturation's okay. I'm going to go ahead and add some texture in this. Not too much, just a little bit and a little bit of clarity somewhere right around in there. And I think I'm still looking good up here. I could pull the whites back a little more if I think I need it. And I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the light image and it'll come up into the active window. And then I'll drag the dark image over to the reference. And I'll just, I think I want to lighten this up a little bit more. This is that little juggling act that you just have to go back and forth. But this is so important at the beginning of this blending process. I want to see if I can recover some of these highlights. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these highlights the whole way back and pull my white point back somewhere around there. It's still blown out in here, but it's getting closer. And again, I want to bring up the exposure somewhere right around in there. 
and maybe a little bit more contrast and uh, shadows, maybe shadows a little bit. And I'm going to go with a little bit more vibrance in here. And then also I'm going to bring up the texture a bit, not too much, and also the clarity somewhere right around in there. And I think I'm looking very close. I might have to tweak this one more time. So let's click on the dark image. It goes over here and then I'll drag the light image over here. And I think I need maybe a little bit more exposure just to get them as close as I can. And I may pull back the vibrance a little bit just to match them up as close as I can get them. Maybe pull the saturation back a tiny bit right around there and make sure I'm not blowing out any highlights so I may pull back my whites a little bit more and I think right around there I am looking pretty good and now I need to select both of these images so I'm gonna command or control click on the lighter exposure I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go to edit in open as actually smart objects in Photoshop click that that'll send the images into Photoshop now this is very important when you're sending your images into Photoshop as smart objects when you double click on these smart objects and you'll open up camera raw you're actually working on the raw file if you would just send them in as layers into Photoshop you will not be working on a raw file you'll be working on either a TIFF or a PSD file. And even if you do convert them to smart objects, once they're in Photoshop as layers, they will not be raw files, okay? So when you double click, you'll be opening up the camera raw filter as opposed to opening up camera raw. A big difference. And now for all you TK8 users, all you have to do is come over here to the TK actions and click stack. If you don't have the TK8 panel, what you'd have to do is use your move tool and what you will do is you'll drag the one file you'll click and drag it up onto the other file hold the shift key down and drop it down and that'll put those two files together like so and now you see the two files are together but then you'll have to close out this file because you don't need it anymore but let me back up a couple steps here and now for the tk8 users you'll just click on the actions and click stack and it does everything for you and it closes out the other file. So the TK8 panel is really all about speed and really great editing tools. And it's very affordable. And if you don't have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, I have a link in the description below that you could click on. It'll take you to the website where you can purchase it. And there's training videos you can get there. And you can use my promo code DK15 and save an additional 15% off any of your purchases on the TK site. I went ahead and zoomed in so we could check this image for alignment. So if I click on the top light exposure here and click this, you can see there's movement here, okay? There's definitely movement, so we have to align these. And by the way, you don't have to do it this way, especially in this method, you could do it either way. But I always like to put my dark exposure up on the top. But again, you can see the movement in there. Now, somebody pointed out to me in a comment on my TK Friday video about, hey, Dave, why don't you use the uh, different stool? I generally don't, but it's a good thing to do, too. It's another way of doing things. As in Photoshop, there can be many different ways of achieving the same results. But this time, I'm going to use the uh, difference blend mode. And this is a very effective way of aligning these images. See these white lines out, out around here? You can see this image is not lined up. Now make sure you have your Move tool active. If you don't, you can go ahead and click on the Move tool, or you could type V on your keyboard. That's the shortcut. And then with your left and right arrow keys and up and down arrow keys, you can nudge this into position. Just like that. Okay? And now I got to pull down on this a little bit. And right there, I think we are good. One nice thing about using the difference blend mode, my other method where I pull the opacity down to 50%, you got to remember to turn it back up when you're done. Because if you don't, you will not be satisfied with the results you'll get. Here, you'll remember because you don't want your image looking like this, just go back to the normal blend mode. And now when I shut off the top layer, you can see they're perfectly aligned. Now you'll notice there's a lot of noise in this image, but after we do the blend diff blending, that noise will disappear, just like magic. Now all we need to do is open up layer styles. Now to do that, you're gonna double click in this area. Not here, not here, 
not on the words, but right here. Double click, Layer Styles comes up, and here's Blend Diff. And don't be afraid of Blend Diff. It's not that big of a deal, but it's very helpful. You'll notice we have this layer and underlying layer. We'll only concern ourselves with this layer. Now, this is a formula, and all you have to do is hold your Option or Alt key down, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and you see this triangle right here on the left side. We're working on a dark layer. If you were working on a light layer, it would be different, and I'll show you what you do there next. But what you do is hold your Alt or Option key down and click on the right side of this and click this and drag it the whole way over to the right. And you've just blended your image. It's that easy. If you had the uh, light layer on top, you would do the opposite. In other words, what you would do, you would split this triangle, hold your Alt or Option key down and click it and drag it this way. Okay, that's opposite of what we want. In our case, we have a dark image on top, so we're going to hold the Alter Option key down and split this and just drag it the whole way over to the right and click OK. And just like that, you've blended your image. Look, here is the before and see the blowout up in the sky and here is the after. I went ahead and zoomed in so you could see that noise is gone. Now you can go around and check your image and make sure everything looks lined up and everything. And look at the job it's done. It's done a beautiful job everywhere. Now, when I align the images, you can see that little light line there. I'd have to crop this image. And I mentioned that on my last tutorial. But uh, because we've moved these images into alignment, and now we'd have to clean that up with a little slight crop. We've done a great job here, and everything looks good. Now, if I click this icon right here on the CX panel, we'll go ahead and fit this to screen. Now, I'll go ahead and shut off the darker exposure layer. And you can see there's my blowout in my sky when I click it on. It's blended really well. Now on the other edit I did on the TK Friday episode, uh, I used the actual sky because I actually cut it out using luminosity mask. Now here there was a little movement in the sky and it looks slightly softer up in the clouds due to the blending where the movement was, but I kind of like it. I think it looks really good. So... On this particular image, it works well. Now, this method won't work on all images. I wish it would, but it doesn't. Sometimes you have to really take your time and work with the luminosity masks and things and get the blend. But for this type of an image, it can be very simple. And why make things complicated if they don't have to be? Now, I have this little bird up in here that I can get rid of. When I'm done, I'll, I'll just uh, use the uh, healing tool and get rid of that. Now, am I done right now? I could be if I wanted to be. I think I have a really good blend. But remember, we have these two smart objects here. If we double click on either one of these, we can go in here and make alterations if we needed to. But I think I'm good. I'm going to hit cancel. Now, when I started out in Lightroom, if you are comfortable with your exposure match, you may forgo the smart object step and just bring this in as layers into Photoshop. And then you could use auto align and all that. But if you're not 100% confident that you had a good exposure match, I highly recommend that you do the method I showed you today with the smart objects. And for the luminosity exposure blending, I definitely recommend coming in as a smart object so you can work on the raw file if needed. Now for my editing style, I would definitely take this image further because there's a lot more we could do with it. And I'll just do my very first step that I like to start out with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And that is to come up here to the luminosity mask button and click it and click on midtones 3 if you watch my tk friday videos you know i do this all the time and output this to a color grading tool the mids 3 just protects my shadows and highlights from being clipped and then what i do is click on the highlight block and just make the highlights a little bit lighter and i do this for uh balance and it and contrast click on my shadows and just darken my shadows up a little bit adding a little bit more contrast and then i'll come to my midtones and lighten or darken whichever they need in my case i want to lighten them up a little bit right about there now here is the before and here's the after but that's my starting point and then i would go from there but now you know how to exposure blend simple images using this blend if technique. It's really simple and easy to do, as you can see. Well, there it is, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. 
I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.